So first, when you open it, it's art cover. So the art cover represents Normandy campaign in 1944. We go, who we have to thanks for making that book possible. Table of content. DD Waffen SS. So they talk to you about history of the Waffen SS and its train throughout the war. Then we get on page three, the Waffen SS special rules. It's really important to understand that special rules. Important rules with the Waffen SS is old N. An old N formation commander gives unit from their formation whose unit leader is within six inches or 15 centimeters of the formation commander, a tactic rating of three plus. So basically what they meant by that is we have a commander of a formation of Panzer IV. His skill is veteran three plus, but every platoon in his formation will have skill trained at four plus. So what happened here if if your formation HQ is six inches or fifteen centimeters of this platoon of Panzer IV and the command of the Panzer IV leader, then his skill would change for veteran three plus. So the Vive NSS, what they meant by that is they want you to play in close contact of the formation HQ and its platoon. That way, every platoon will get, with no cost, a skill of 3 plus instead of 4 plus. So it's really important, for example, with infantry if they want to mount an assault, because their skill would become 3 plus instead of 4. Also, in a defensive position, if you get assault against, then your skill, because the formation HQ is less than 15 centimeters or 6 inches, we change from 4 to 3 plus. They are unique for the Waffe NSS, and it's help to understand that the Waffe NSS, they were refitting in Normandy in 1944. So they had old commanding officers with young leader or young a Panzer platoon leader, and they didn't have the skill to fight properly as ESS. So basically, this old N rules would bring your HQ commander near the leader of the Panzer for platoon, as a, this example, and give them the skill of a 3 plus. So keep that in mind if you decide to build your Waffe NSS uh, formation that it is old end rules, it's really unique for that, and it's perfect if you intend to go in the offensive and hit hard your enemy. So basically, then we have the two troopers rules that everybody know and has not changed, it says the German rules. Then you have bazooka skirt, flame tower, flame infantry mounted assault, Panzer Faust, unit transport. So, the rest is pretty much German, but old end is typical for the, that old end rule is typical for the Waffe NSS, and it's really important to keep that in mind. That will help you by keeping your formation commander near his units. Now, with every book from Flames of War, you get the history part inside the book where they talk about the different situation of that era. So we got Operation Overload. Target Normandy, the Atlantic Wall, defensive plan, DD, the different beach, so the airborne evasion, Cold Beach, Sword, and now know your Panzers. So you get the Panzer IV, the Stug, the Panther, and the Tiger. Yeah, Panzer IV are the main vehicle, combat vehicle of the Waffe NSS. The same way you get your Armored Panzer Gun and Company, Panzer Gun and Company, and Reconnaissance Company. I don't think uh, I've really played Reconnaissance Company, but it's part of the Waffe NSS and uh, as a battle formation. As you can see on this page, you get the DD Waffe NSS forces, and you get SS Panzer, Panzer formation that include Tiger Tank Company, Panzer Tank Company, Panzer IV, or Stug. Tank company. Also, you may have Armored Panzer Grenadier Company, the Panzer Grenadier Company, or the SS Reconnaissance Company as part of a formation. Then you got the different support 
a bit like every other formation, German formation. Now they talk about historically what looked like the different units. So they talk about the heavy tank battalion, Markel Whitman. Also, they provide you with the formation company, what they were and what kind of vehicle part of it. And then you get 102 SS heavy tank battalion. So when we talk about Tiger SS tank company, it is only with Tiger tank. And as we going to see in a few seconds, because they are Waffen SS doesn't mean the Tiger would become cheaper, as maybe some people may think. So a Tiger SS tank company. So one Tiger is 13 point, while a two Tiger HQ is 25 point. And if you look at the, the German, you can see that the Tiger tank are 24 point for two Tigers. So basically, it even costs more to have an SS Tiger tank than a Wehrmacht a tank company HQ. So the tank Tiger costs you more with the Waffen SS than with the Wehrmacht on DD German. Now, here you got the second Dazerreich SS Panzer Division with all the formation and unit part of that. And then our ace, Ernst Parkman. Then the Panther SS Tank Company. Those Panther are cheaper in many ways and cost total, but their rating also change. The good thing about having a Panther SS Tank Company is you can have your headquarters as Panther. You can have one platoon of Panther, second platoon of Panther, but you get the choice to put a couple of tank, Tiger instead, and then you even if you decide to have a third platoon or to have the choice to put Panzer four or Stug with it. So you can have your Panther headquarters, one platoon of Panther, then you can have a platoon of Panther or Tiger, and then you get the choice if you want to continue to put the Stug or the Panzer four, even you can have the quad anti-aircraft to accompany those guys into the battle to protect them against the Allied Air Force. So when we talk about the Panther SS tank company HQ and Panther SS tank platoon, we can see that three Panther is 26 point, four Panther 35 point, and five Panther in your platoon is 44 point. How does it compare to the German uh, Panther platoon. So a Panther tank platoon is three Panther for 33 point for the Wehrmacht, while the SS is 26 point. So you got five Panther for 44 point, but with the Wehrmacht for 44 point, you get four Panther. So you get the equivalent of one Panther on point save. So it's a huge point advantage, but the drawback of it is here. They are hit on three, while the German Panther unit are hit on four. So you get more than likely going to be hit by your enemy by 20%. Also, motivation is fearless three plus, while the German uh, in general, are confident at four plus, but the skill is three plus, while the skill of a Panther SS platoon is four plus. That's why it's become important that special rules for the Waffen SS to have your company HQ following closely the Panther tank platoon to change the skill for three plus. And the rest are the same stat. So the big difference is you get way more tank for the number of points, but more than likely going to be hit and the chance to be destroyed is higher. And the motivation is better on the SS tank platoon than on the Wehrmacht platoon. So there's a give and take because of the point. So really a new thinking you have to have with the German is you decide to have SS unit 
and doing the offensive. I don't think this SS is good to keep as a defensive unit. You have to push, push hard, and get into contact and attack. And you get the, ch the chance to have more vehicle for your buck, if we can see. But they're going to be hit more often than the, the Wehrmacht. After that, probably the best is the Panzer IV. Panzer IV SS unit company will really be cost effective. You can put a lot of Panzer IV onto the table at a really low cost. So if you decide to have a formation of Panzer IV tank, and you have a headquarters with two pens with Panzer IV, you have one platoon of Panzer IV. The second platoon, you have a choice between Panzer IV, Tiger, or Panther. So you get already a good choice here. You can decide to have two Tiger in your platoon, and you have a really strong formation. Also, you can have a third platoon of Panzer IV or Stug, and a fourth platoon of Panzer IV. Also, the anti-aircraft is always part of any uh, tank company as part of the formation. Now, the cost of having the Panzer IV SS tank platoon. So for three Panzer IV, it's 13 point, four is 18, and five is 22. So when we look at Panzer IV, we can see in the back that five Panzer IV is 28 point for the Wehrmacht, and four Panzer IV SS is 22 point. So again, it's having five Panzer IV for the price of four of the Wehrmacht one. But again, they get hit on three compared to four for the gym, for <coughs> the Wehrmacht. When we look at motivation, they are fearless. Motivation is four for the Wehrmacht and three for the SS. But they have a remount of two plus. So if they get bailed out, the chance they are coming back because they are fearless, are higher for the SS than for your Wehrmacht one. And the last one is three plus, the same for the SS. But again, the drawback is the skill is trained four plus, while the Wehrmacht is veteran three plus. So again, it's very important, and every formation, infantry of tank, to old hand rules be applied and keep your commander HQ really near your platoon. And it's really, I'm gonna say it again and again, all the rules would be the key of your formation in any battlefield. So if we compare the German with the British, here's a Sherman armored troops. You can see for Three Sherman and one Firefly, so four vehicle. It costs you 17 points, and for the Panzer IV, it's four for 18 points. So they are pretty much the same price as the Sherman for the British. And when you look at the British, they are hit on four compared to three for the SS, but the motivation is four while the German is three, and they are skill are the same. So pretty much. You get the same kind of vehicle and the amount of vehicle for both party at the same price. So it bring back the SS at the same level as the British Sherman Armored Troop. For the Stug, it's a bit the same thing. Tank companies, you get your Stug, Stug tank platoon, second platoon, you have the choice between the Stug, the Tiger, and the Panther. Then the third platoon would be Stug and Panzer IV, and then the entire craft, the small uh, AA platoon or the quad AA platoon. It's pretty standard for every tank formation. Then you get the price and also the train and assault are reflecting the Waffen SS, so all then still in effect, and you have to keep your formation HQ really nearby. The Normandy campaign, they show the advance of the different troops with the SS 
try and take old and put them back to the beach. Then they talk about more direct, like the Battle of Caen and the breakout. Then the Farley's Pocket, the 12 SS Panzer Division, with them in Normandy, and this different unit that belonged to the 12 SS. Then we have the armored SS Panzer Grenadier. So they are pretty much the same kind of uh, formation as you can see with the Wehrmacht, except cost effective, really high having SS Panzer Grenadier. It's almost the same price as the uh, beach defense, but they are it on three, and the HQ is a skilled veteran three plus, motivation three plus, and the save is three like normal infantry. But when we look at the skill of a Panzer Grenadier platoon, the assault is three plus. So if you decide to make an assault, it doesn't impact if you have your HQ command beside you because the assault become a three plus. But motivation is three, hit on three, but you got MG team seven with the abstract for 10 points. And then you can have different half track to go with the heavy machine gun, the eight centimeter SS mortar section. That's normal with that is normal with every infantry, armored infantry German SS or Wehrmacht. Then you got the 7.5 centimeter SS gun platoon, the grill gun platoon, and the flamethrower armored platoon. As a Panzer Grenadier, it goes the same way. You got your Panzer Grenadier headquarters, the infantry, infantry. You can change your second one for armored Panzer Grenadier platoon or reconnaissance platoon. So it would be a good chance for you to have a reconnaissance platoon. So one to protect your rear or your uh, objective and your sector, while the reconnaissance platoon may act as a Panzer Grenadier platoon and go forward. Then you got your heavy weapon, your artillery, the gun platoon, then tank hunter. So you can bring your tank hunter and your gun platoon part of the formation, as well as the flamethrower and the quad or the light AA anti-aircraft. So if we look at a platoon, a 7MG42 team, it's seven point. And when we look at the Panzer Grenadier platoon, seven MG42 team is nine point. And if we look at the beach defense that they provide, the beach defense, seven MG42 is six point. So it's almost the same price of having the beach defense platoon. And like for the beach platoon, Hit on three, motivation is three fearless for the SS, while it's a confident for the beach defense, but the last 10 is five plus for the beach defense, while the SS is at three. So really good for that, for the SS Panzer Grenadier. The skill is five, while the skill is four, and the assault for the Valfan SS is three plus. When we look at the Panzer Grenadier, you have Fearless 3, and the Panzer Grenadier have 4, that's 10 is 3, the same as the SS. The skill is 3, while the train is 4, so old N, really important to keep even with the infantry. It will help your unit to succeed a bit more. The rest of uh, other books from Flames of War, we go with all the unit that go with the formation and then we also have the first Adolf Hitler Panzer Division, the 9th Panzer Division, the 10th Panzer Division with a bit of history on each, the 12th SS Armored Reconnaissance Battalion. So what we have here is the SS Reconnaissance Company. So it's really easy to build 
and you can have a reconnaissance company SS and part of a formation and your battle. So we have the company HQ, the platoon, then a second platoon has to be reconnaissance or Panzergrenadier platoon or an armored Panzergrenadier platoon. Also, you can have a third one, reconnaissance or Panzergrenadier or armored Panzergrenadier. Also, part of your reconnaissance, you have the Pumo with the five sounds might, or you can have the Scout 221 or 222. Also, a second Puma team troops, or the 231 that we haven't seen yet, but it's part of the Waffen SS. Or people who have previous version three, or bef before that, have the 231 and their garage. The Scout troops with the two Kiev Z 250 vehicle, or and uh, two centimeter machine gun on top of it. You get the artillery as a reconnaissance mortar platoon or the 7.5 centimeter gun platoon. Also, you can have a 7.5 inch tank, tank hunter, an artillery with armored, or the 7.5 gun platoon. So it's really effective combat unit. And you got everything to have a good reconnaissance platoon, but again, it's for the Waffen SS where you want to lead the attack and charge. If you go to your tournament and you don't know what kind of enemy you're going to encounter, it might be more difficult. But the SS, if you are the attacker, you probably have a wonderful machine right there in your hand. And then they give you the cost and the stat. For your company HQ, your reconnaissance platoon, your half track, the mortar, and all the vehicles that come with your platoon of reconnaissance. And for the rest of the book, you get your normal support troops for uh, your formation the Yak Panzer, the 88 Tank Hunter, Observation Post, but you get the F. The key of Z250 observation post, your Panzer 3, you got your Wesp, your Hummel 3 or 6 for the SS stat to go with. You got your 10.5 artillery battery or your Nebel Warfare, your Quad, your Light AA platoon, the Light AA platoon uh, dismounted, the 88. AA platoon, and that pretty much cover the book. So at the end, you got the D-Day Waffen SS Example Force, where they built you one with 100 points, painting your Waffen SS vehicle, painting the uniform, basic guide, French countryside, and then DD battle. You got all those missions like us. Encirclement, gauntlet into the unknown, and then you get the catalog to buy your vehicle. So that complete pretty much the book for the Waffen SS D Day. Let's see some common card. Now let's talk about the command cards. This is the D Day Waffen SS command card. There's a bunch. We'll not go through all of them. I'll just pick a few to show you what they are and what you can do with it. And the first is the best Panzer. You get the same. This is for the Panzer IV. You get the same for the Tiger. You get the same for the Panther. You get the same for the Sturmgeschus. Is This card will give the Panzer IV tanks have the following rating for two plus two points per tank. So if you decide to have a platoon a four Panzer IV, it's 80 point. If you decide to have that card to be put it, then your platoon will become eight more points, so 26 points. So it's even higher than the four point, 22 point from the the Wehrmacht platoon of Panzer IV. The difference is is going to be hit instead of three. It on four, they stay motivation fearless, they stay protected amount of two plus, but the skill change for three. So 
it costs you a two point per split per pens of four just to get eight on four plus or I don't know if it's really worth it to get eight points for a platoon of four while the pens of four from the Vermac would cost you 22 points for pretty much the same staff compare for that one 26 points so even if they are cheaper if you try to upgrade them they will become more expensive than the Vermac one then another card is you can bring the broom broom bar part of your formation or team for the attack and it costs nothing but you change the guy pens of four SS tank under platoon. So you may feel a broom bar as a tank platoon in place of a Yak Panzer IV. Here may be an interesting is the 88 tank hunter. This 88 tank hunter platoon may fire an artillery bombardment with the following characteristic. So you can have an anti tank 88 platoon, and for one point, then they will become artillery with an end tank of two and a firepower of four. So maybe to consider for one point, you may have the end tank and the RC at the same time. You can also have dog and Panzer IV platoon. So what it is, is you can decide to dig in your Panzer IV. Only the turret will appear. So you get a 360 range view and fire possibility, but only the turret is part of the tank. So when they get fired at, it's always placed in ambush. Uh, it's always uh, so this card, the Dagen Panzer IV platoon. So when the British try to pour the 12 SS, the 12 SS decide to dig in the Panzer IV and make them a good anti tank gun to back up the defending infantry. They are constantly concealed at all the time because they are dig in. And only the turret rotates. So if you get shot at, you take the armor of the turret of the Panzer IV and the angle to decide if there's it on the side or in front. And it does nothing, but your Panzer IV will stay where they are. So if you have you want a solid defensive position, you can decide to take a platoon of Panzer IV dig in and it costs nothing you can also do the same for two point with a machine gun nest so you can decide to have them dig in they will not be able to move but it will be concealed at all time and they also bulletproof cover Team attacking a nest must reroll successful firepower test to destroy it. So it's going to be really a strong defensive position. So if you have in mind a defensive position and a strong one, machine gun nest for two point might be a good one. Each MG team is a unit. In this unit cannot move, but can rotate to face the target when shooting at our nest. Each every machine gun team is a separate independent team. So even if you have three destroy, you don't have to do last stand because they are independent to each other's, even if they are part of the same platoon. And they are always concealed and bulletproof cover. Now we'll look at a couple big guns. So if you decide to have one of those war arrow, like Ernst Barkman, It is four point to have that guy. The human leader may reroll one failed roll to it in each shooting step. So that guy or that unit leader, if you decide for four point, every time you shoot, if he miss, you can reroll a shoot on every turn. Also, if the unit leader is destroyed, you roll a die and it's five plus, it is banned out instead. So it might be interesting to get. But it's four point. Now, everybody want to know Michael Whitman. So Michael Whitman, the formation commander, has a halt ROF of three, a moving ROF of two, 
and the reroll all fell to hit rolls when shooting with its 88 gun. So Michael Woodman, it's a you can have that card for your formation HQ Tiger. And it's gonna fire three round instead of two and alt and two round instead of one after movement. And he would reroll all failed hit rolls when shooting with the 88. You can use it as an ambush to any other unit that would normally be held in ambush. So if you are allowed to one ambush platoon, Michael Whitman and his tiger can be placed in ambush as well. Now, how much costs Michael Whitman and your team? It would cost you 12 points. So extremely excessive to have that guy. And you can be bad luck and get, lose that guy. So you almost double the price of your tiger here. And that's the last card I want to show you for that. It is the Tiger Ace is back. Before deploying this unit, roll a die and give this unit the following command card at no additional cost. So for three point, you can deploy one unit of Tiger with the Tiger Ace card. I don't think I've saw that or played in a long time with version four and it is uni unique to the Valve NSS, German unit, Tiger SS tank coming HQ, or Tiger SS tank platoon. Can I have that? So for three points, you may decide to have extremely strong Tiger tanks. True. So that cover pretty fast, we can, and you get all those uh, roll over them. And then you get soft skin, lucky, Panzer Pioneer platoon, armor flak, half track, etc., etc., etc. that come with the car. So that complete my DD Waffe NSS look over the book and the command card. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. See you soon with my future video. Thanks, bye bye.